In this video, I'm going to talk about how to create non-uniform space filling designs using the sequential design of experiments module in the focus tool set. If you're interested in hearing an overview of the sequential design of experiments methodology that's supported in the sequential design of experiments module and how these pieces fit together to support scaling up carbon capture technologies, you can check out the first video in this list. Also, if you're interested in how to create different types of space filling designs and focus, there are a couple of other videos that you might be interested in. Today's video focuses just on creating non-uniform space filling designs and focus. There are different options for space filling designs um, that are all available in focus, whether we're in the first phase of an experiment at this particular scale, or it's a sequential design and we want to incorporate data that we've previously collected in an earlier phase of the experiment. All of these options are covered in focus. For a discussion on how to select the correct design methodology for your application, again, see that overview video. But today in this video, we're going to focus on just one of these scenarios where we're assuming that we've previously collected some information and we're now, focus and we're now following up with another phase of a designed experiment using non-uniform space filling methodology. The example that we're using is a model for an MEA system involving three inputs of interest, rich solvent flow rate, flue gas flow rate, and steam flow rate. And the test objective for this experiment is to identify optimum operating conditions for capture rates from 50 to 90%. We have a budget of 25 experimental runs, but we're not gonna use them all at once. We're gonna use them over a couple of different phases of designed experiment to make the most of that experimental budget using sequential design of experiments methodology, which allows us to learn as we go, as we go to increase efficacy and really use that budget wisely. What that means is that we've broken down this problem into three phases. The first phase was exploring the input space uh, across the space of those three inputs. The second phase is to refine our model by reducing uncertainty in our model, by strategically collecting data to, to reduce the uncertainty. And then we'll move into phase three, which is optimization, where we're really narrowing in on the region of the space that leads to optimum operating conditions, um, keeping in mind that we're interested in capture rates of 50 to 90%. Phase one has already been completed. So we've already used nine of our 25 runs to explore the input space. We've taken, we've collected data, updated our model, and now we're in phase two. We're gonna allocate eight runs to phase two, and we're interested now in really starting to target areas in the input space where our model is showing large, the largest amounts of uncertainty in order to refine that model um, so that we can increase the confidence that we have in our model. If you want to see um, how phase one came together, you can check out the video titled How to Generate Uniform Space Filling Designs in Focus. But again, in this video, we're in phase two, non-uniform space filling designs. A non-uniform space filling design is going to try to spread out design points throughout the space of input or throughout the input space similar uh, in a similar way to uniform space filling designs, but the difference is with non-uniform space filling designs, we're able to emphasize some regions more than others. So that means that we can choose to have more in-depth exploration of certain areas of our input space. In this figure, the um, design points are spread out throughout the square region of interest, but in a way that we're collecting more information in the middle of the space, circled in green, than around the edges in blue. So again, we've just dialed up the emphasis in that green region, but we're still getting some information throughout the whole space, and that's exactly what non-uniform space filling designs allow us to do. The way this is going to work is that we're going to start by specifying a candidate set where each point in the candidate set has an associated weight. So the candidate set should span the entire feasible space, just like with a uniform space filling design. Oftentimes that means working in a grid across the space. And if the space is an irregular region 
or a regular region, you know, either way, we just want to make sure that we're filling that space densely with candidate set points because our design is going to be drawn from the candidate points. And then with a, with a non-uniform space filling design, what we're going to do is assign a weight to each point in the candidate set where the regions with higher weights are going to be given more emphasis. So this is what allows us to really dial up or dial down the areas of the space that we want to emphasize. The goal with constructing a candidate set for a non-uniform space filling design is to make sure that our candidate set spans the entire space and that the weights represent accurately our interest in the different spaces. So here you can imagine that our candidate set is shown as all these points um, and we've assigned weights because we're interested in the orange areas more than the blue areas and we're least interested in the gray areas. And we just wanna make sure that the weights that we assign to each of these points corresponds to our level of interest. In our example here, we're interested in reducing the uncertainty of for prediction throughout the input space. And we have an existing model and we can use that model to help us generate the weights for the non-uniform space filling design. Higher model uncertainty is gonna mean we're gonna have wider confidence intervals. And we can leverage other modules in the focus tool set to obtain those confidence intervals using the UQ model. And then what we're gonna do is just use the confidence interval width as a weight. So the wider the confidence interval, the more uncertainty. That means we're gonna be placing higher weights on regions of the space with higher uncertainty. And we wanna do that because that allows us to collect more information in those areas. And as we collect more information, that'll allow us to ultimately reduce our uncertainty in those areas. So our non-uniform space filling design MEA system model, again, includes those three inputs, and we also collected previous data. We ran that nine run uniform space filling design in phase one of our experiment to explore the input space. We wanna make sure that we avoid sampling close to where we've already collected data, because that would be a bad use of our experimental budget. We don't need to repeat ourselves. And sequential design of experiments allows us to avoid repeating ourselves by specifically taking into account the data that's already been collected and strategically selecting the new data points, the new design points to um, be, be spread out from the old design points so that we can really make sure that sequentially as we move through each phase, we're taking into account what we learned previously and we're not repeating ourselves. And then finally, we have our candidate set from our existing model, which includes our specified weights. We're gonna hop over into focus now to take a look at how we would put all these pieces together to generate a design. Okay, again, we're in the space filling design um, option because that's what we're focused on. And we have our candidate set with existing weights. So we wanna click on load candidate set and we want to load in our existing candidate set. Notice that, um, okay, we are being told by Focus that we have a candidate set with 93 observations and no missing data, which is good. Um, but if we did have some missing values in our weight column, we would be able to use Focus to um, impute those missing values, to fill in some of those missing values. So if there were certain points in the candidate set for which we did not, we were not, you know, we did not obtain a confidence interval to use as a weight, we would be able to go in and sort of fill in those gaps in focus. But in this example, we don't have to worry about that because we have no missing values in our confidence interval width, which is the column we're using for weights. So we can click OK. And we want to make sure that the file is selected to candidate because it's a candidate set. We also really need to make sure that we load in our existing previous design, that design from phase one. Because again, in order to make sure that we avoid repeating ourselves, focus needs to know what experiment, what design we've already run so that uh, focus doesn't give us you know, similar design points in phase two. So we're going to go in and select example one design that was from the uniform space filling design and now we've got that in as well and we just need to switch the file type to previous data all right this all looks good 
we can select our um, files, take a look at them. We have our uh, candidate set here with the corresponding weights. You know, we can plot things, um, make sure that everything looks good. And uh, that all looks nice. So we're gonna click, uh, we're gonna click continue. And now we have our candidate file is listed as aggregate candidates. That's because if we had several candidate files that we were working from, we could load them in separately and um, Focus would go ahead and aggregate them for us. In our case, we loaded in a single candidate set. And so our aggregate here is gonna look just like the candidate set file that we loaded in. In this example, we also have previous data, um, which we loaded in. And similarly, if we'd had a bunch of previous data in separate files, um, Focus would have aggregated it for us here. But in our case, we only loaded in a single previous data file. Um, so our aggregate is going to look just like our data file. As we generate designs in Focus, Focus is going to automatically save them for us in this output directory, which we can view. And if we wanted to change the location, we could do that in settings, but I'm happy with this. So I'm just going to leave it alone. And now we can select the design method. And again, in, in this example, we're using the non-uniform space filling design. So I'm going to select that and then I can open the SDOE dialog. Here we have listed our three um, input factors. And so there's their type is selected as input and that all looks good. Um, here we've got the ranges listed for each one, which is just a nice gut check to make sure that, you know, everything looks the way it should and it does. Focus adds this index column um, that it titles ID, which is just nice because it allows us to easily see which um, candidate set point actually got included in the design. If you don't like that, you can uncheck it, but I think it's nice to have. So I'm going to keep it checked and I want to make sure the type is set to index, which it is. Finally, our column confidence interval width, that's the column that we're using as weights in the non-uniform space filling design. So I need to make sure that I change that type to weight. And now I'm all set to go. There's a couple um, different decisions now that I can make for the non-uniform space filling design. The first one is whether I want to use the which scaling method I want to use for the uh, non-uniform space filling design weights, where um, we can either choose to preserve the shape of the original distribution, which uh, happens if we use direct maximum weight ratio, or um, we can select the ranked maximum weight ratio, which re-ranks things, creating a uniformly spaced ordering of the points. Um, so that we have an even flat histogram of the weights rather than maintaining the original uh, distributional shape. It's nice to do things both ways to generate some designs using both of these um, maximum weight ratios because it's going to generate different designs. You know, this choosing um, direct versus ranked is going to give us different looking designs. And so it's just a good idea to generate some both both ways and take a look at the resulting designs and decide which one looks like it better meets the needs of the particular experiment. The next decision to make is the design size. And in our case, we have a budget of eight runs for this phase. So I'm going to check eight. And now finally, um, we can select a different um, maximum weight ratio to use. This is going to dial up how much emphasis we place on the areas that have the higher weights. Um, and so if we have a maximum weight, weight ratio, if this equals one, that just means there's no emphasis. It's just a uniform space filling design. Whereas if it is, if we pick a really, um, you know, high number for maximum weight ratio, then what that means is we're going to put a lot of emphasis on the areas that have higher uh, weights. What's a good idea is to consider a range of maximum weight ratios. And so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to select two really small that almost is a uniform space filling design. I'll select five. I'll select 15 and I'll select 35. And I could go all the way up to five options if I wanted to. And then I'm going to click estimate runtime. And then that's going to allow Focus to give us um, an estimate of how long it's going to take to create these four different designs using the different maximum weight ratios 
with a desired design size of eight. And once that um, estimate happens, then we can go ahead and select the number of runs that we want. Um, or I'm sorry, select the number of random starts that we want to use. One thing that's important to note is with uniform space filling design, the number of random starts should be pretty large, um, like 10 to the fifth, you know, 10 to the sixth. With non-uniform space filling designs, a different methodology is, is being employed. And so the number of random starts can be much smaller and still give us um, really good designs. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, we're going to hop back over into uh, PowerPoint now and take a look at the designs that result once we, um, once we actually generate these designs in focus for this range of maximum weight ratios. So here we are in focus and we chose to use 50 random starts, um, which is a good number. Again, for the non-uniform space filling design, 50 is plenty. Um, and we have our range of maximum weight ratios from two to 35. And you can see that with two, we have almost no emphasis. And again, uh, that's, that's to be expected. If weight ratio equals one, that's equivalent to a uniform space filling design with no emphasis at all. Whereas if we, as we start to move up to MWR equal five, we're seeing a little of emphasis. With 15, we kind of have moderate and we have the most extreme emphasis with the um, 35 option. That was the biggest maximum weight ratio we considered. So that's gonna give us the, the largest amount of emphasis. Looking at these designs, we can then just decide which one fits our needs the best. In this example, I'm gonna go with the MWR equal to 15, cause that gives us a good balance, providing some emphasis on those areas of the space that had higher uncertainty while still allowing us to explore the rest of the space fairly thoroughly to just, in, uh, to just improve our model throughout the entire, entire region as well. So what we're going to do that then is um, operate the system at those eight input combinations specified by the non-uniform space filling design. And then we'll go ahead and collect values of the response of interest at each of the specified input combinations. There is an ordering capability in focus as well that allows us to order the um, eight experimental runs to be run in the fastest time allowed. Um, basically, it, it puts the um, eight runs in an order so that they're as close to each other as possible. So we're not making huge leaps in the settings as we move from one run to, to another. And that just allows us to reduce the required resources. So we can choose to use that functionality if desired. Um, in either case, we'll uh, you know, run all eight runs and collect values of the response of interest at each of those input combinations, where again, we're choosing to gather more information where uncertainty is higher based on the confidence interval width using the non-uniform space filling design methodology. And then we'll incorporate that data that we collect into our model and update our model. And that is going to have the effect of reducing uncertainty in our model overall and in particular in those regions where we, we, where we were seeing higher uncertainty previously. Then what we'll do is move into phase three of our multi-phase design of experiments um, set up here, where phase three is going to start to really target um, finding the optimum while making sure to keep in mind that we want a good range of capture rates from 50 to 90% represented. If you'd like to see um, what phase three is gonna look like, you can look watch the video titled How to Create Input Response Space Filling Designs in Focus, where we'll continue this example into the last phase, phase three.